That's what I always say to coaches. Like, like if you're not passionate about helping people, just don't do it. Just don't. Do it. You're, you're, you're here to make money. Like, you can only sh sell shit once. That's it. You can only sell shit once. That's that's you out of the game. So if you're not passionate about doing it, then then forget about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. When I was when I was working in the gym space, more and I was I, I spent a period of time where I was recruiting PTs, and I saw hundreds coming through, and most of them just come in because they like training. They they, yeah. they want to be a PT because they like training. And to your point, it was exactly that. Like you ain't got any people skills, mate. You don't even like people. But yeah, you like yeah, trainings, yeah. you want to be a PT. It's yeah, a wrong yeah. job, mate, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you said to me how many you've had over oh, the years. Oh, unbelievable. Mate. You, you won't believe the shit that comes that's through. Yeah, I can imagine. But, but we also look back, and don't get me wrong, I've, I've, you know, through my PT career, like I started PT when I was in my early 20s on the gym floor. And there's things that I look back at now and thinking, fuck me. Like, if I'd have, I'd have been, you know, I was banging in, we were talking about this again on the break. I was banging in 40, 50 sessions, PT sessions every single week, week on week, week on week. And, you know, going through burnout, but because, you know, you love what you do, you, yeah. you continue to do it. However, some of the things that I used to do, I think, why has that client gone to make boy and not me? And then, and then you eventually realize that later down the line. Why? Because you maybe stood there, like it's, it's, you've got a tight T-shirt on with your arms crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a not, professional it's journey though, isn't it? Like personal training is, it is a journey. You learn and you pick up information and you, if you choose to use that information, if you go like, I tend to, if someone says something to me and I think, oh, that's, that's good. I've never really heard that before. I'll go away. I'll research it. I'll just, just, just research it. See if there's any data to back it up. And then if it's shit, I'll just, yeah, all right, that's shit. If it's good, I'll keep it. You know, and I'll put it in my back pocket and then on my next client, I'll be like, oh, you know, we'll implement this. Into yeah, that's how you learn you know? as an individual, for sure. Like you can't just be the perfect PT. But some people are straight egotistical yeah. and they think they know everything. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you will go through the phases of that yourself. Like I've, I've you know, when I was one-to-one -one PT and you, you sort of think, oh, you know, you, you know it all. And it's like, when you look back and you think, fuck me, like, actually I knew fuck all really. Yeah, like, I guess I was getting results. It? I was getting results. But some of the times we were getting results was because people were just doing it with, with willpower. Yeah and stick into my protocols. Mm -hmm. And then when you actually start taking people uh, and you start talking on a more broader level of getting results with a lot of people, like anybody, right, listen to this, any any PT and any person can get great results with one or two people and they'll put it all over their fucking social. Oh, look at this fucking results. I've got fucking amazing results. Yeah, that's because he stuck to the chicken broccoli rice. Anybody can do that. Anybody's going to get lean doing that. They're not going to win bodybuilding shows by doing that, but they're going to get lean. And they're going to lose a lot of weight. And they're going to fucking say, yeah, it worked for me. But what about the other 95% of people that didn't get results? That's because the methods were too strict and they couldn't adhere to it long term. But people will only see, people won't post about fucking 95% of people that didn't get results. The issue is, is there's no sustainability of that business because people won't, won't continue to work with that person because you're only getting 5% who can actually stick to it. And I, I think you're exactly right. Like, obviously, with my with my clients, I've had exactly the same. I just make sure that I'm, I'm in a bit of a weird situation where I'm full all the time. I don't like to do too much social social media stuff now. Main reason is I'm full. Realize you're on a podcast, mate, right? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, is with my client base, I don't put a lot of like yeah. you know transformations and stuff like that out anymore because when I do, you get like a lot of interest, and then I was ending up being like, you know, they go, oh, can we can we start with you?" But no, nah, sorry, I'm full. Yeah, oh, sorry, I'm full. And then yeah. it just become like people would get more pissed off with me, or I was doing a waiting list, and then people would message me like two months later, going, "Oh, have you got space yet?" And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, sorry, I'm still not yeah, got yeah, space." Yeah. But what what that tends then, to happen from a business perspective, what would happen here is is just putting systems in place. Um, but then then you've got to put those systems in place to release yourself to do those, or you put somebody else in control. Was of working marketing. on your business rather than in your yeah. business, and and you put somebody else in control of marketing. Like I'm the sort of person like I've got a business coach and. Um, you know, he's trying to potentially pull me out of doing check-ins, but I love doing check-ins. Mm -hmm. So I want to continue to do what I do whilst, you know, pushing other things that I don't like doing, like social, and I don't do much on social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though we've got four or 500 clients per course, I don't do that much on social media and I should do more, but then I've got to delegate that out more. And that's down to me as a business owner to be able to do that. And, and having the balls, and this is the first, the hardest part is taking on your first trainer like, and going through that, going through that and I'm sure guys that are watching this this podcast that run their own business taking on your first staff member taking on your 10th staff member whatever like and the most issues you will have with, is with your team like they're the, they're the biggest issues that you will have but also they're also going to you know complement what you do as well yeah. so you know you need to weigh it up and don't get me wrong you've got to invest in the right people and you've got to bring in the right people like you said about mm. you know um, you know going through all the PTs yeah. you've got to bring the right people into the environment 
Because you might have somebody who's fucking really knowledgeable. I used to know a PT who was so knowledgeable, but they were so cold yeah. and like so like like when so, you know when walk, someone walks into the room and they're just fucking everyone's just like oh, oh <laughs> like that and it's not just down to the knowledge base it was just down to that but the you, environment you've got to that spend that, that time brings. with that person for an hour say at a time yeah. and I know I'm not paying any money to be with someone for an hour if I don't fucking like them yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean absolutely like, so true so true <laughs>